Let's say you're designing a customer class. Well, the first thing you'll do is you'll write a list of all of the pieces of information you want to track for that customer. Name, city, region, etc. These become properties. That part's not so hard necessarily. But then you'll need to come up with a list of methods. And here you'll want to give this some thought. What are the actions that a customer can perform or that you can perform on a customer? And then what are the variations on those? So we saw an example of constructors. The constructor is code that runs when you create a class. In the customer class, we just saw an empty constructor. So you create an instance of the customer and no additional code runs. But we also saw a constructor where you pass in the values that you want stored in the properties of the customer. So that was just two examples. There can be many of them. So you'll wind up with various overloaded methods or various different versions of the same method taking a number of different arguments. Well, if you don't do a good enough job of designing this or you do too much designing on the fly, you may wind up with a number of methods that are very similar and confusingly similar because they seem to do the same thing with just one or two minor variations. Now, maybe this is exactly what you need. Maybe this is just the result of adding over time. So it's not a bad idea when you're creating a class or designing a class to give some good thought and think long and hard about the types of methods you're going to want and give yourself the flexibility to add as much as you need without getting overly confusing.